evaporator. Not the temperature of the whole box. Yes. I was going to say it's in 33 right now. Okay, so we jumped. Uh, there's 33. Oh, that's the ambient thermistor. I'm sorry, I thought it was 39. The ambient thermistor. So what's ambient thermistor? There's a thermistor either up here or located on the main board. It's telling you the temperature outside. So if Joshua wants to know how cold or hot the house is, you go into this test, you say, man, it's 77 degrees and you're out. I don't know why the board has to know the temperature outside, but if it gets too hot out there, it might give a warning or something. But I've never had any, any service calls where someone had to service it because the ambient served thermistor failed. <laughs> Most of them are on the main board. If the ambient thermistor is bad, guess what? You have to change the whole main board. That's expensive. Let's go to the next test. 34. The user interface shows temperature says at the user interface. So now we have another ambient thermistor up here. It's 81 degrees up in this area right here. I guess they, you know, they just want to check the temperature of everything. Okay, let's go to 39. Okay, the evaporator thermistor, that is the evaporator in the freezer, and that's telling the unit the temperature of the evaporator, not the air temperature in the whole box. We have a freezer thermistor for that. This is the evaporator. It acts as a safety for defrost. Even though we have a defrost heater and defrost thermostat, we have a sensor on that evaporator also that's telling the box how cold or warm that evaporator is. Okay? Then yes, tell me. Um, suppose the evaporator is not working properly, like it's freezing too much. Would it cause the door from... You mean like a defrosting problem? Yeah, it's about defrosting. Would it cause the door from open? They've had problems where ice was building up on the tracks, yeah. and they had to redesign the tracks so you could open and close the door. Okay. Or you just unplug the fridge and wait a little while for the temperature to get warm enough and it'll open up. Okay? okay? Uh, but no, the evaporator thermistor will tell the box the temperature of the evaporator and the evaporator components. If it got stuck in defrost and the defrost thermostat's not shutting it off, but the refrigerator's way too hot, that thermistor can warn the board, hey, it's way too hot back there. You're cooking your steaks in your freezer. Okay? Let's move on down to uh, number 45. The ice maker mold thermistor. That would be the ice maker mold itself, but this is a plastic tray, what we call a flex tray ice maker. It's a little tiny plastic tray, and on the bottom of that tray is a little thermistor. It fills up with water. When that water gets cold enough and that water freezes, it tells the board, hey, the tray is frozen. It's about 18 degrees, and it, it twists. A part of the tray gets stuck by plastic and it twists it like we used to do when we were, you know, back in the old days, you had a plastic tray and you twist it to get the ice out. Well, that motor would twist it and part of the plastic will get stuck here, but the motor will turn it just a little bit more, pop the ice out and come back. But on the very bottom, the thermistor is what tells that ice maker to drop that ice, which is approximately 18 degrees. Okay? So if we go a little bit further, let's go to the next one. Firmware parameters, mainboard firmware, user interface firmware. You don't really need to know that, but let's say the manufacturer made this refrigerator and uh, like I said back before we did some refrigerator talk that they had changed the programs on the board a couple times because they had problems with the ice maker. So they had to like make an adjustment to the program of the ice maker. So they tell you to put a new board in. It's not really a, a new board, it's the same as the other one, but the program on the board is slightly different. So you might call technical support and say, listen, I'm having a problem. I went through all diagnostics, everything passed fine. The guy's gonna tell me, what is the firmware or what's the main board firmware? It says, it's saying zero two, it's series two. Oh, well, listen. Last month we just came out with a series three. If you're having this problem with this ice maker, change the main board to series three. When you put the new one in, you go to this step and you say, yeah, I got a series three. And now I'm here, sign here, and you're out the door. Okay, so the firmware tells you what version of software is on the board. Very rarely do you need to know that, 
but sometimes the technical support people from the manufacturer might ask you, what version board do you have on there? And you'd have to go to these steps and tell them, I have 0, 2, or 20, or, or 5, or whatever, and they're going to say, listen, we just came out with a 21, change it to 21. Okay, order the same part number or order or this new part number to get the new version. And then a lot of times they'll have you send the old one back. They'll give you a little UPS sticker, put the old one in the box, tape it up, put the sticker on the outside. It sends back to them and they change the program on that board for someone else's refrigerator. <coughs> All right, guys, so that's the diagnostics on this. There's a whole other diagnostics for the ice maker. I'm not going to go through that. But if the ice maker wasn't working, we'd press some different buttons. We'd go into the diagnostics for the ice maker. We'd cause a tray to flex. We can call water in. We can do other components. This is the main refrigerator diagnostics. For those of you guys competing in a contest, these are the ones you need to know. So what I'd like those of you to do, if you get a chance today, one, I want to see if this one's getting down to temperature first. I want you guys to go to the main board, test some of these components, learn the pin locations, learn the voltage tests the Ohm's test, and so forth. Any questions? No?